Uh, so good evening uh, and welcome everyone to the distinguished members of our city council, all of the elected leaders that are here, our city employees and fellow residents. It's my honor to stand before you to deliver my ninth State of the City address. And to those tuning in from... <laughs> <laughs> And we have many of those that are tuning in from home tonight on our brand new revamped NewBritainCT.gov website in Umerali. Thank you very much for that. So hello to everybody tuning in from home. Over these past nine years, uh, we have been fearless in our pursuit to create a better New Britain. Our past successes are self-evident and our plans for the future are intended to build upon that success. Together, we're making New Britain the shining example of a Connecticut city on the rise. The progress we've made over just the past two years while dealing with the impact of the worldwide pandemic, it's unmatched and it's garnered the attention of others throughout the state. Our peers are beginning to use New Britain as a model for showing just how much can be achieved when politics is left at the door and the best interests of our citizens are put front and center. We continue to be focused on a results driven leadership and our residents continue to witness firsthand what can be accomplished through steadfast governance very meticulous planning, if you know me, and a positive vision for our collective future. So to put it simply, it's what can be achieved with compassionate yet strong hands on the wheel. You'll often hear me say that leadership takes a vision. A lot of politicians talk about vision, but it doesn't take long to figure out that they don't actually have one, they just want to win an election. But as I start my ninth year as your mayor, it's crystal clear to me that the only way you can successfully lead a city as complex and as diverse as New Britain is to have a concrete idea of where we need to go and then work every day to make it a reality. Leadership requires vision. It, re it is the ability to look at something and see beyond what it is to see what is possible. And that's how I govern. And that's been our model for success and it will be moving forward. So tonight, I want to share with you our vision for the future. Success for New Britain must be focused in five key areas. Institutionalizing progress, investing in ourselves, strategic economic development, fiscal restraint and taxpayer protection, and a commitment to bipartisanship. So let's address them. While a lot of you see all the pictures on social media and everything that I post on Facebook and Instagram and, and you think that's all it takes to be a successful mayor, I can really stand up here and promise you that that could not be further from the truth. Um, what you see online is only a mere fraction of the constant hard work that goes into being an effective leader of a city as large as ours. Since I took office, we've put our city on a pathway to success. But the reality is, is that the success is always teetering on the outcome of the next election cycle. And there's little doubt in my mind that much of what held New Britain back throughout the 1990s and the early part of this century were the constant and petty political battles. Every two years, we elect a new mayor and a common council. And while that is certainly critical in keeping us accountable to voters, it also means that every two years, any sort of positive momentum has the potential of being undone by the partisan winds of any particular year. Am I a better mayor today than I was in 2013? Absolutely. Every day, I learn something new. I meet someone or I face a situation that forces me to be better than I was the day before. But let's be honest, having a five-term mayor of a city like New Britain is an anomaly. In order to ensure that all of our collective hard work does not get undone by the politics of inexperience, ignorance, or partisanship, it's crucial that we have a mechanism for continued professional and nonpartisan leadership that's built directly into our city charter. Continuity means a permanent operations manager in place, filled by an individual who has the concrete qualifications, the understanding of our city and municipal government, and professional management skills to maintain a level of continuity and progress that is insulated from electoral politics. The ins and outs of city government are often complicated and intricate, but moving backwards is not an option that I'm willing to, to consider. It's not realistic to think I can be mayor forever. But it is imperative that the city work to sustain the successes of the past eight years by supporting a charter, that revision, a charter revision that allows us the ability to hire for that continuity that I talk about and institutionalize that progress that we've made together. <laughs> Theme two. 
People and businesses want to invest in a city that invests in itself. Self-investment is paramount to our future success. Our growth potential, our retention rate, our overall quality of life, it is a primary driving factor behind any thriving community. Right now, we're making crucial investments in our aging water and sewer infrastructure. We're beautifying our streetscape and neighborhoods across the city and we're continuing our parks overhaul. We're fighting back against the callousness of addiction and homelessness, and we're in the beginning process of outlining a citywide fiber network to connect our assets and provide a low-cost internet alternative to the residents of our community. That's a big one. So let's talk a little bit about these things. The New Britain Fresh Line Upgrades for Sanitary Health, most importantly known as the NB Flush Program, spearheaded by Ray Esponda, is a $90 million investment in repairing and replacing the city's 100-year-old stormwater and sewer infrastructure. It aims to reduce the municipal ta and taxpayer costs associated with stormwater infiltration into sewer lines, protect public health by preventing sewer backups, and protect the environment by eliminating wastewater runoff. More importantly, it will promote community growth by increasing sewer capacity for expanded development. And it will be funded by the new Clean Water Fund that I certainly hope will be established if it's passed on tonight's agenda. The core duty of, my, of me as your mayor is to make New Britain the best place it can be to live, work, and play, as Pastor Blanks stated in his prayer. The projects that we've been have been complicated. Um, but one of the ones that I'm also extremely proud of is our Complete Streets Master Plan. And there's more to come with the Complete Streets 2.0 plan that we approved at this body just a few meetings back. It's an essential piece of fulfilling that duty. People want to know about roads and bridges and sidewalks, an essential piece of government. Our Public Works Director, Mark Moriarty, has been absolutely essential in carrying out these projects, which beautify our streetscape, it increases safety for our residents, and it makes it easier to get around. This is a huge piece of making New Britain an attractive place for those interested in working here. We're continuing to enhance our beautiful park system with the $10 million overhaul of Osgood Park, and the price tag keeps going up and up as inflation keeps, yeah, that happens. <laughs> um, but it's turning it into a destination where people will go for physical activity to enjoy nature and gather with family or friends. The new Osgood Park is going to feature so much that's going to improve the quality of life for families and children, not just in the surrounding neighborhood, but the entire city. And I want to thank this body. I want to thank all of the elected and appointed leaders, as well as our Parks and Recreation Director, Eric Barbieri, for all working together to make this project a reality. We continue to provide a hand up to those experiencing homelessness and struggling with addiction through our New Britain Recovers initiative. It's a coalition of providers who serve our population in the areas of homelessness, addiction, and youth prevention. And we're joined tonight by our local youth prevention council. Thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> Through this nationally recognized initiative, we have brought together the city's opioid task force, our homelessness plan, and our local youth prevention council into an efficient one-stop shop that certainly provides a more holistic approach to those in need. So I have to give a hats off to Mallory Dupre of our community services department, to Omar, to Tyshonda, to Mary, to everybody in the office there for the absolute miracles that they work day in and day out in the name of recovery. Thank you guys. <laughs> The City of New Britain is also making improvements to its technological infrastructure. As part of our Smart City initiative, we'll be developing the fiber network that I stated earlier. That will be laid throughout the entire city, connecting all of our city assets on a private shared network for, faster, for a faster communication path for all of our facilities. This project will provide the ability to connect high-speed internet not just for city assets, but potentially for many residents and businesses, especially in neighborhoods that need it the most. It will also provide the city with the ability to better serve our residents of free public Wi-Fi at public parks, at many other locations. It's gonna allow for increased public safety with the addition of gateway cameras. It's gonna help us improve our traffic flow, connecting our traffic signals on main thoroughfares. So a special thanks goes to John Delgadillo and CJ Ganza for coordinating, facilitating, and hopefully implementing the future of this project. <laughs> Thank you. 
we continue to be committed to growth and development. We're attracting businesses in every corner of our city. We have a ton of shovel-ready developments happening or developments that are in the queue. You don't have to take my word for it. The proof is made public year after year after year. In 2021, the city's grand list grew by nearly 4%, adding a ninth consecutive year of growth. I will say, New Britain is truly experiencing a renaissance unlike anything that has been seen in decades. And the block-by-block -block transformations we are spearheading improve the quality of life for every resident. And now, I'm proud to report that we have an adopted document guiding that development for the next decade. The members of my strategic plan committee are diligently implementing the city's recently updated plan of conservation and development. It's the directional document that sets the city on a path to prosperity for the next 10 years. But these developments don't just magically appear. You have to make them happen. And I take great pride in the fact that my administration has become known for making things happen. I assure you though, it's not just me. It wouldn't happen without the hard work of an amazing team of people and I wanna take this opportunity to say thank you to all of our city employees. Over the past two years, we've faced unprecedented challenges in how we do our jobs and how we live our lives. But the men and women who work for the city have shown up every day and they've played essential roles in every accomplishment that I've mentioned tonight. So on behalf of the residents of the city of New Britain, I say thank you to each and every one of you. As we look towards the future, it is also important for us to remember that our utmost responsibility as elected officials is to be a servant to the taxpayers of our community. We must continue to exercise fiscal restraint, spend money on only what is necessary, and when possible and responsible, give back the access to the hardworking taxpayers of New Britain. We have turned a $30 million deficit into a $30 million surplus, and that is cause for celebration. My goal is that by the time I leave here, the future mayor, the chief administration officer, I hope, and the council will never have to worry about budgets the same way that I had to. A constant and fierce commitment to fiscal responsibility allowed us to lower the tax rate last year for the first time in nearly 15 years, putting much needed income back into the pockets of our citizens, and I hope that with the help of this body, we'll be able to make that tax reduction permanent this year. And finally, it is my wish for this council and for all levels of government to follow our lead by governing in the spirit of bipartisanship. The best ideas are not necessarily left or right, but rather collected through the process of consensus with one goal in mind, the betterment of New Britain. Thankfully, we've been blessed with a high level of community support in this line of thinking. Residents who share our collective desire to bring back brighter days to the Beehive. Our belief in bipartisan, results-driven government gives everyone from every neighborhood a seat at our table. By working together, we can solve every problem and we can continue to set the city on a path to prosperity. But it is important that we cement bipartisan governance by amending that charter to require minority party representation on this council moving forward. The citizens of New Britain never run from a good argument. Trust me, we like to debate. Is Carmelo still here? Oh. <laughs> um, we love a good debate, <laughs> but we deserve a council structure that will ensure robust debate on all mm -hmm. issues and require those in the majority, including the mayor, to work collaboratively across the aisle to get things done. Our greatest accomplishments over the past nine years have been the product of vigorous debate and bipartisan support. And we must do all we can to make sure that continues by enshrining minority representation in our charter. We are chronicling a path forward a path of long-term vision and of success. And together, we're securing the future for our city that all of our residents deserve. And I know the future of New Britain will only grow brighter as long as qualified, sensible leadership remains in place. But let us not forget a very important piece, and that is to listen, to listen to each other. Now, I did not talk to Pastor Blanks prior to writing this speech, <laughs> but he mentioned that as well. Most important thing is to listen 
And if there's one thing that I've learned over the years, it's that in order to successfully lead, you must listen more than you speak. So let's continue to build off our accomplishments. Let's continue to push forward by pledging to work towards the goals that guarantee our success that we talked about tonight, institutionalizing progress, investing in ourselves, having strategic economic development, protecting our taxpayers, and commit ourselves to bipartisanship leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to stand before you tonight and report that our state of our city is stronger than ever. <laughs> We are growing, we are confident, and we are looking towards the future, ready to embrace our limitless potential and opportunity. But if it's one thing we learned in this speech tonight, it's up to us to keep it that way. So I thank you all for being here with me tonight, for your unwavering support and confidence in my leadership. May God bless you. May he bless the men and women of our city who keep us safe. Chief Shute, Chief Ortiz, Chief Baxter, thank you. And may God continue to bless the great city of New Britain. Thank you. Thank you.